in Fernie, British Columbia, the only city in BC completely surrounded by the Rocky Mountains. During our two-day visit, we got to see beautiful scenery, learn about the town's history through beautiful heritage buildings, and enjoy delicious food and locally made drinks. We're Matt and Carla, a Canadian couple with two totally different backgrounds, sharing our experience and advice about traveling in Canada. After almost a decade of world travel, we decided to focus on our home country of Canada and see how deep we could go. This started with a 150-day road trip from coast to coast to coast, showcasing some of the best things to do in each province and territory. We thought we'd see it all on that road trip, but we barely scratched the surface. So follow along as we continue to explore the second largest country on Earth. This is actually our first time in Fernie when there's no snow on the ground because we're working with Tourism Fernie to showcase the fall, although all the activities we're doing are available throughout the summer as well. And to kick things off, we've rented a canoe from Island Lake Lodge to go paddling on Island Lake. I think canoeing is probably one of the most Canadian things you can do. There's a small frog! Oh my god! We're gonna go over! I've never seen such a small frog! We almost kill it with a canoe because it's so hard to control the, the boat with the wind. But no, she was okay. Well, that was short and sweet because it's really not a big lake, but it's definitely a beautiful spot to come and check out. We actually arrived last night here in Fernie and checked in at the Twisted Timber Guest House, a beautiful bed and breakfast. We really love the house so much and the hosts are great. We have a beautiful room. We're staying in the duck room and yes, there are a lot of ducks in there and one thing they told us is they actually just installed a Finnish sauna as well so we're hoping we get enough time to try that out but one thing for sure is they serve a very delicious breakfast today we woke up to smoked salmon eggs benedict which is one of our favorite breakfasts and it was delicious and huge so we're not that hungry but we decided to come for lunch anyways because we've heard so many good things about the chopstick truck food truck here in Fernie that serves Vietnamese street food. We got two of their most popular dishes, which is the tea wrap, which is basically a noodle bowl with beef, carrots, cucumber, and egg roll, as well as a bao bon with pole pork. And we couldn't miss getting some kimchi. It's very good. I love bao buns because I love the texture. Although Fernie is really known for its outdoor adventures such as skiing in the winter or hiking in the summer, it actually got its start as a mining town more than 100 years ago. And that's what gives it this beautiful downtown historic core. But it's not only because it was a mining town. Back in the day, they used to make a lot of buildings out of wood. But because a fire came through here in 1904 and 1908, wiping out the entire city, they rebuilt using a lot of brick and sandstone. So now there's a lot of beautiful buildings to check out. So we just grabbed ourselves a cultural guide, which you can pick up at like the tourism office or many stores and restaurants. And we're gonna take our own self-guided historical walking tour through the city. The first stop on this tour is the CPR station. So that's the old train station that used to serve passengers about 100 years ago, all the way up until 1964. Now it's in use as an arts building, but there's still a lot of trains that pass through the city carrying coal. The third stop on this tour takes you to the museum, but back in 1910, it was home to the home bank. And it's significant for a number of reasons, two of which are the exterior is still in its original configuration, but also in 1923, the bank failed, which is what led to the rewriting of Canada's banking laws. We made it to my favorite building so far, which also happens to be one of BC's best buildings. This was a courthouse which was built between 1909 and 1911 and today is in use as Fernie's government offices.
Another one of Fernie's most beautiful buildings is right behind me. It actually survived the 1908 fire and was home to the Crow's Nest Pass Coal Company headquarters. So one of the things this area is known for and the only reason it really exists today is the coal mining that has been going on here for more than 100 years. And you can learn that in another one of our videos that we made about the Crow's Nest Pass, which we'll put a link above, which is actually on the same highway as Fernie. Nowadays, it's home to City Hall as well as the Miner's Path, a short little walkway out front which gives you a fascinating glimpse into the history of mining with interpretive panels, sculptures and more. This building actually stood out to us because it's quite unique in Fernie. After the fires, most of the companies rebuilt using brick, but the Fernie Cartage Company went down to the river and rebuilt their building using rubble stone from the Elk River. Well, that was an interesting tour. It's always a good idea to learn more about the history of the place you're visiting. And since we're in downtown, we were recommended to have dinner at the Loaf. Well, we already got ourselves a drink. I got a cranberry mojito and Matthew just a regular mojito. And this place is an Italian restaurant that actually makes their pasta and bread in house. And we went with our waitress recommendations. So to start, we got some calamari. And next is coming some beet salad and pesto fettuccine. I don't normally order salad, but when it has beets, candied walnuts, apples, goat cheese, sounds very good. I think I need to order salads more often. And this smells so delicious. Oh my God, my mouth is watering. Super good. It is super good. Oh, <laughs> we're so full as always, but that was very good. But now we have to get back to our B&B because we got to get a good sleep because tomorrow we're climbing to the top of Mount Fernie. A cool morning but once you get going you warm up oh well, we're about to start the hike up to Mount Fernie we were uh, Andre showed us a, a different route that kind of starts from the bed and breakfast we're just <laughs> of course we're always hoping we find the trail <laughs> once we get up there but it should be a little bit of a shortcut as always, we're kind of nervous about bears, especially now that it's the fall because they start fattening up for the winter. But you just make a lot of noise and don't forget your bear spray. Well, it looks like we found the trail, so that's good news. <laughs> it's starting to get a little hot. Time to put away the jacket. DJ, music. We usually don't like to play any kind of music because we like to enjoy the nature sounds. But here is necessary because we don't see anyone else in the trail. So to scare bears away. We finally made it to our first viewpoint and according to the sign, this is called Batman Mountain. Unfortunately, I didn't bring my bat signal, so we won't be meeting Bruce Wayne today. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Wow, the view is amazing. It is starting to smell like Christmas. It smells like pine or spruce. Mm. I hope we're almost there. We've been hiking for two hours and a half. 
and they said that it's supposed to be like four hours round trip. I mean, mind you, we've been stopping for pictures and serious vlogging work. But yeah, I hope that we're almost there. <laughs> this is a pretty easy hike. I mean, it's uphill all the way, but it's a good path, right? So right now we're at 1,970 meters and it looks like there's another hike that starts from here called the Rocky Road to Windy Pass. So you want to do that? No, thank you. We gotta go back. We have much more to explore in Fernie. That's true. Well, this is our first hike in Fernie. And what do you think, Matthew? Very nice hike, very beautiful. And of course it's called Mount Fernie. So that's why we wanted to do it, but Gives you good views of the mountains and of the city. Well, we finally made it back from the hike, but it took longer than we imagined. And as you can tell, we freshened up a little bit. So we unfortunately ran out of time and didn't make it to the museum because they close at four today, but it's on our bucket list for next time. Luckily, we learned quite a bit by doing our own historical walking tour yesterday, but we did leave enough time to make it here to Fernie Alpine Springs because we heard they make some of the best kombucha you'll ever try, and I think it's going to taste very good after that hike. Time for tasting. Uh, 12 flavors on tap. You have the description and uh, name and description. Name will be on the tag here. Mm -hmm. So leave it up, Rainbow Paradise, for example, and you're going to find the definition of it. Mm -hmm. If I take Paradise, it will be an organic coconut and organic matcha with a little touch of pineapple. And uh, basically, it's uh, one of the big sellers this summer, wow. the one in balls, particularly. And uh, almost looks like champagne here. Yes, it does. And it tastes lovely. Mmm, you can really taste the coconut. This one is pink. They're all good so far. Now I'm going to try Spring Magic. This one's extra special because the one that's here specifically, not the one in the bottles, but the Spring Magic here has rhubarb that he grows in his own garden and vanilla beans that he brought back from when he lived in Madagascar. Very good. Well, it's very hard to choose a favorite, but I think I'm gonna go with a rainbow. I really like that one. They're all so good and they're not like overpowered. Well, it was a very cool place to visit because it was like super interesting to learn about how kombucha is made. I didn't know that there was so much work involved and it's super good i really never imagined that i was gonna like kombucha so much because my first time as i said was the best experience but this one is pretty good and we couldn't live without a case so if you can make it to fernie you shouldn't miss uh, visiting fernie alpine springs but if not just check out on their website where you can buy these drinks as great as it was to try fermented kombucha, now we're at a different stage in the process. We're gonna be visiting Fernie Distillers. Are you getting drunk tonight? Certainly looks that way. <laughs> we just had a tour here at the distillery. Really cool to learn about how they make everything and it sounds really delicious. So we decided to try a flight. That way we get to try a little bit of everything. There's their vodka, their gin. They have a ferny fog liqueur, which kind of told has kind of an Earl Grey flavor. Then a cinder, which is like a sweet pine smoke. And then they have two flavored gins they do, one with pear and one with spruce tips. So it's supposed to be just like you were in the forest and you ate a spruce tip. So I'm really excited. And then we had to get two cocktails, of course. This is the one that you like, right? Okay. Ferny fog. Mm. I like it. I like London fog. So now I like 
the Ferny the, Fog. The Ferny Fog. Had to pick up a souvenir, and the best kind of souvenir, Ferny Fog. Well, that's it for this trip, and we could definitely spend a few more days exploring Fern. Yeah, we, we loved it enough that we actually kind of were thinking about buying a place here, maybe. I know. <laughs> but we'll need you guys to donate us a lot of money if we're going to make that happen. <laughs> but it was a really fun time. We can't wait to come back here in the winter and go skiing again, and come back here in the summer or the fall and do more activities, because this was only a couple days. But we got to get back home. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave us a comment. And of course, for more information about Fernie or Canada in general, visit our website at mustycanada.com. I'm afraid of this one because it was even strong for you. So just a small sip. Just smoky. Oh yes, it goes all over. <laughs> oh.